I'm starting my project on um, excuses for messiness and the first thing I'm going to do is tell you my excuses for messiness because you need to know what your excuses are before you can fight them. Um, the first is my rheumatoid arthritis. I use it for every excuse of not doing something physical. It's always my pain and my tiredness and all that. So that's a big excuse, but I happen to know people with rheumatoid arthritis or even worse health issues that have sparkling clean houses. And my mom had a lot of pain issues grow as a, when I was a child. She had some severe illness and her house was very spotless. So it's not like, uh, that's not a good excuse. So the point that I'm going to use with that one is you can't just say I'm not going to use that excuse because you're going to have that little spur of the moment twang but nothing's going to come through. You need to make strategies to actually get rid of that excuse. And so over the next days I'm going to start with that one which is my pain and my rheumatoid arthritis and I'm going to start actually making some steps. When you're in the worst pain ever, how can you make sure the house isn't messy or, you know, kind of just work through it. Um, one of the things that I'll be using, and I will link to this, is my sensory processing um, disorder post. That, I think, is a very important one because it um, talks about how to get through things that you know you're bad with. And the f most um, important one is like something that you're squeamish about doing or um, not able to do. In in my case, um, we'll use the bike again. I didn't want to ride a bike. I was scared to ride a bike. So the first step would be like start looking into bikes. Don't say you're scared of them. Like look at it more as a challenge. Why are you scared of it? You know, you're not going to do it today. So you don't have to be scared just to look. Like reading a book about bikes won't hurt you. So, you know, it's more like, what would that be, like a gradual naturalization to the idea of a bike. Um, and that's just a small way to think of it. For me, it would be, for example, a visualizing what a certain area in my house would look like. I am getting rid of a lot of stuff in the yard sale next Thursday. That'll be a bunch of posts coming up, too. But... Um, I need to find the strategies that can make me work through with rheumatoid arthritis and my pain issues and my weakness. Well, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm able to ride a bike and swim, so that really doesn't seem right. That's the kind of thing I'm going to be working on. And translating that into obesity would be like my Oprah nuts thing that I've been writing about, and I will link to that in the bottom. But, you know, just because you think soaking nuts is going to make something gross, well, why don't you soak a few nuts and try it, and then see, instead of saying it's bad before you even tried it. If a, if a whole bunch of people in another country already do it, how could it be bad? Like, they're okay, so maybe it's good. And that's kind of the thing that you do, is just kind of look at your issues from a different way, like... You know, who told you nuts were fattening? Who told you you shouldn't eat them? Why did they tell you that? And maybe certain nuts are better than others. All kinds of things. So, I think in obesity, I know before, when I was obese, my rule was no nuts of any kind. I just, no, they're fattening, I'm not eating them. Well, now, I eat them all the time, and I weigh 138 today, not 275. And I don't think about dying fat, and I don't think about going back to fat. And um, my biggest passion is to bring other people here with me. So I, wor I succeeded, and now I'm going to have a clean house. So I hope you will visit fitinfun.com and visit any of my links. Any traffic helps me. I'm so appreciative that you're here. Thank you so much. Have a great day.